tests in a kill test, a sharpness test, and of course, up first, the strength test. Dave? All right, gentlemen. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about eight contest weapons that amazed everyone on Forged in Fire. If you're a fan of Forged in Fire, make sure to leave a like on the video. Also, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified when we release our daily videos. Number one, John's Bulletproof Blade. Forged in Fire, we have a small elite group we like to call the Bulletproof Blade Club. Hopefully, you'll both be joining to test the strength of your In life. season five, episode 12, we met John and Mike, who were the final contenders of the episode. They were having to make a weapon that would kill, but also be bulletproof. Once they took both blades, they started aiming and shooting at them. For John's blade, some of the material did come off, but it didn't nick, meaning that it worked as a bulletproof blade. Mike's did as well. However, when it came to the kill test, John's blade was more comfortable in the handle and was more lightweight. While both were amazing in their own rights, John became the winner for both the blade being bulletproof and as a killer. And number two, we have Chase's slasher blade. The hockey mask chop. To test the strength and durability of your knives as well as the overall construction, I'll be bashing them into these hockey masks. Remember, this test is all about what the masks do to your knives. In this Season 5 episode, the Grim Reaper Scythe, you have Chase, Tim, and Brandon who are making their slasher blades. For the strength test, they started off bashing the blade into a hockey mask. While Tim and Brandon's had chips in them and even rolls in the blade, Chase's stood up strong, the edge held up perfectly, and passed all the other tests as well. It cut and was perfect for slashing and stabbing. He and Brandon ended up making it to the next round, but Jaces stood extremely strong when it came to that blade. It amazed everyone how strong yet durable and easy to move it was. It was very balanced. Now the real question is, where can I get a blade like that? Number three, Tony Sika Sword. This, this is a kill test. We'll take your Sika Sword and deliver killing blows on this ballistics dummy. Frank, you're up first. You ready? Hell yeah. Let's do this. In season five, episode three, you see Frank and Tony making their Sika Sword. While both were amazing, Tony was the winner and his weapon proved to be deadlier. When they started off with the killing test, Tony's sword was more violent and ended up penetrating deeper than Frank's. It's described as being the scary Sika Sword, making the host clearly impressed and amazed. In just the initial hack onto the dummy, it completely demolished it. The dummy's head came off as well. In the second test, the strength test, both blades held up nicely and had no rolls or nicks on them. It was razor sharp and held up well on the test. On the last test, the sharpness test, it cut straight through the sugar cane, staying intact, making a very powerful, scary, and amazing Sika sword. Which, I don't know about you, I really wouldn't want to be at the end of that sword. Number four, Ethan's Barbarian Sword. Oh my god. Wow. Honestly, both guys in this episode were absolutely amazing. The Barbarian Swords were just absolutely phenomenal. It was Michael versus Ethan when it comes to the Barbarian Sword test. They started off with the kill test, where both men had weapons that could successfully kill and penetrate. The weapons were absolutely amazing, not only because of the sharpness and the strength, but also because of the balance, weight, and handle. He was told that the weapon felt like you could wield 
hold it consistently and move around, and that is definitely what you would carry into a battle, because it's not too heavy either. It was strong enough and sharp enough for all the tests, and no edges were rolled or nicked off. This was truly a remarkable and amazing weapon for everyone to see. Also, who could forget how clean that sword actually looks? Number 5. Mark and Jessica's Trench Knife Bladesmiths, this is the strength test, the fuel can stab. I'm going to use your knives to stab holes in these fuel cans. Now this trench knife was just absolutely incredible. The knife started off with a bit of a cracking that Mark and Jessica do address right before the strength test, but it does not influence the actual blade itself. The blade is comfortable and the blade is sharp. It penetrated deep into the gas tanks and had so much power and strength in it. When it came to the sharpness test, the host mentioned that it had penetrated through the hose before he had even realized it and hit it. It's no wonder why they made it to the next round. With something that comfortable yet sharp, they definitely deserve to move on. Number six, Kelly's Falcata. Our bladesmiths have turned in their Falcatas. We've seen them perform in the tests. Now it's time to take a closer look at our Smith's work. We're gonna start with Justin's Falcata. Doug, what do you think? Kelly Vermeer Vela was a bright young woman from the countryside who was a self-taught blacksmith. She also had over three decades of experience. Not only that, but she worked as a farrier, so she was voted as the most out of place by her own competitors. But this title didn't stop Vela, who instead worked her hardest to prove everyone wrong. She went through three rounds of the show, just like every other competitor. However, it was true that her talent shined through and managed to wow the judges. After Begley, another contestant was sent home. It was up to Vela and Jason Jones to show each other up and create a phallicta, a curved sword. Each individual was given five days at their home to forge and craft their weapon, which excites the competitors. Vela was even more pumped up when she saw a ram's head on the example one, which this inspired her to put a horse head on her own sword. The 40 nine year old woman worked her hardest on round three and her hard work certainly paid off as she unveiled her beautiful creation her phallicta the judges were in awe as they picked it up admiring the grip and design the base was thick but that was forgotten as they admired the horse head on her sword kelly ended up being the first woman to win the show and is now an inspiration for young girls from everywhere like isn't that really impressive Number seven, Billy Bob's Rumphaya. Master Bladesmiths, see what kind of lethal damage your Rumphaya's will do. We will take your Rumphaya's and deliver lethal slashes and thrusts on this wild boar carcass. Hey, look at Billy Bob go. These bladesmiths had the task on them to create a Rums Faya, a close combat weapon created around 400 BC. During the kill test, Billy Bob's weapon was so sharp that it cut through the pig like it was nothing. They said it was so light they could almost wield it with one hand, so it definitely did pass the killing test. Next, it went to the strength test. There were not any nicks or rolls or anything on the blade, meaning it definitely passed. Finally, it was on the sharpness test and just like the other tests it passed with flying colors the blade cut through razor fast and had no issues with any marks on the blade it was truly an amazing consistent weapon if you ask us and you could tell that the judges were quite impressed as well Finally, at number eight, we have Alex's horseman's eyes. Mike, Alex, welcome back to the forge. You've had five days at your home for just to work on your horseman's axes. Now, when it came to this episode, we were so sad to see that Mike's axe did not pass the strength test. However, Alex's did, and not only that, it was still razor sharp and did not lose at all after attacking a huge block of ice. During the kill test, the axe completely demolished and disemboweled the dummy, and the spike completely pierced the heart. This was a very powerful and amazing weapon. When 
having to test strength, Mike's axe head completely flew off, which made Alex very nervous. Could even see it on his face. However, he had nothing to be scared of. It not only stayed intact, but it also stayed sharp and tight, looking as if it did no damage to the axe itself. Alex really did a great job with his axe, and it ended up becoming such a powerful weapon. The axe is also very aesthetically nice to look at. Thanks for watching today's video on 8 contest weapons that amazed everyone in Forged and Fire. And remember, if you're a fan of Forged and Fire, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Also, turn on that notification bell so you're notified when we release our daily videos.